Your ears are not deceiving you. Welcome to the lap of luxury. Welcome to The Last of Luxury. I am your host, the fabulous Leo Man. And on tonight's show, we have our holy series of questions. An exclusive one on one interview with hip hop artist and social media commentator, Jimmy Lee. And of course, into an insight. So stay tuned as you are now in The Last of Luxury. Your okay, good evening, everybody. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am the fabulous Leo Brown, and welcome to The Lap of Luxury. Happy Thursday to all of you. I'm so glad that you guys are here and you're joining me today. So let's get right into it with my caller, you say what question. And if you notice, I, if you follow me on, on any form of social media, whether it be Instagram, whether it be Facebook, whether it be um, no, I'm not on Pinterest. Okay, I had to think. I was like, I'm not on Pinterest, and I'm not on Care. I'm not on Periscope. Um, but if you follow me on on, so, on certain social media platforms, my question of today of the day was: Are there perks of being a side chick? And if so, what are they? And have you ever been one? So I, that's what I want to know: Are there perks of being a side chick or a side dude, aka the other man or the other woman? And if so, what are they? And have you ever been one? If you're so inclined, please leave it in the comments. Tell me your story about you being a side dude or a side chick, or you knowing, you necessarily don't have to do it, or you knowing someone who has been a, um, you know, a, a, a side man or a side woman. And we're going to go ahead and get into that. And then in the next 30 minutes, we're going to have my special, special guest, my extra special guest, Miss Jamaica Dobbs, a.k.a. Jimmy Pink. If you are a YouTuber like I am, um, she is one of my favorite, favorite YouTubers. She's so most talented. She's a she's an entertainer. She's a commentator. She's a hip hop artist. She is a daughter, a sister, a friend. You know, she's definitely somebody that I enjoy. And I think you will, too. And uh, then, of course, we're going to have Intuitive Insights, and that's where I get to give you guys one-on-one -on -one readings. So for those of you who don't have access to, you know, my website, or oh, your money's a little funny right now, you get to have sample readings from me, you know, with love. So how is everybody doing? And thank you, Shekinah. Thank you. Um, I, I like to think my taste in music is nice. Thank you very much. So how's everyone doing? How's everyone's Thursday going thus far? I hope it's going well. And how do you like tonight's look? I'm loving the earring, the hoop here. So thank you so much. Um, but I hope all of you are having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time uh, so far. But I want to know, like, have you ever been a side chick or a side, side dude? And if so, what was it like? What was that like for you? I know that for me, and, I'll, and I'm just going to, I guess I'll start first. So when I first started, you know, getting into the, you know, how do I put it? I don't want to say the life, but I think when I first started doing my thing, um, majority of the men that I attracted were married. And some of it I went into knowing, some of it I didn't know, you know, but let's just say I did it anyway. And... You know, I would say this. I think that, thank you. Thank you, Jandy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but I think that being a side, I think here's the thing. I think being a side chick or a side dude, I think that there are perks. I don't think there are privileges. I think there are perks to it. And 
let me just, let me, okay, let me explain what I mean. When you are the side chick or the side dude, you, there really aren't any issues. You get the good stuff. You get, you know, the, 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 the affection, you get the attention. You get to be, you get to be that kind of like a, how do I say it? Like the relief for that person uh, that you're with. But the, there are no, there are no privileges because there are no holidays. You can't go around the family. You know what I mean? You can't, um, (laughs) you can't go around the family. You can't meet the friends. You can't do any of that. You know what I mean? When you are a side chick or a side dude, you're just, you're basically a secret. You're a well-kept secret, but you're a secret nonetheless. So there are no, I think there are no advantages, but I think you get the, the, you get the fun stuff, you know, depending on whom you're with. I think you get the fun stuff. But I will admit that when I first started, you know, not, I don't want to say dating because I've never really been on a date, but I will admit that when I first started, um, when I was younger, I, a uh, majority of the men that I dated, or I shouldn't say dated, the majority of the men that I saw were men that were married. And, you know, in a way it was kind of, I won't lie, in a way it was kind of fun because I knew what I was getting into. And that's the thing about, I think, what people don't understand about the whole side chick phenomenon, because let's be real, you got scissor and, you know, we, we, we're kind of, you know, if you look at like reality TV, you know, we're, we're, we're in that whole arena of the side chick thing. We think it's cute, some of us. Uh, but, you know, I realized that for me, as time went on, that it was not it was not worth it, and I was worth more, and I wanted more out of, you know, out of my, for myself and out of my life. I didn't want to just be a good time guy for somebody. Um, but, hey, some of us like it. So that's why, that's what, that's what my caller, you say, what question is. Are there perks to being a side chick? Please let me know. I want to hear you. Don't be, don't be out here being afraid to talk about, well, we can't talk about that. I want to know. Everybody has done something that's going to come out in the light sooner or later. So I want to know, have you ever been a side chick? And if so, what was it like? And two, are there perks to being somebody that's on the side, to being the, 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 you know, the one that you, the one that the person comes to in the middle of the night or, you know, when, you know, hey, you both have very little to do. So I want to know, what was it like? If so, if that was your experience, what was your experience? Because everyone's experience is different. So that's my question of the day. That's my call. You say what question? So please, honey, tell me. Get let's get into it. I want to hear. I want to hear from y'all because I think it's important to have dialogue and discussions such as this. And hello, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. But yeah, that's my question. You know, have you ever been a side chick? Have you ever been a side dude? What was it like? Did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? I know that when I did it. I think, and I'll be very frank, I think part of me, a big part of me actually liked it because I was like, you know, I'm giving this person something that they can't get at home. I'm giving them attention. I'm giving them time. It might have been physical attention, but it was still attention, nonetheless. Um, It might have just been physical time, but it was still time, nonetheless. Um, And I realized, I said, okay, you know, in the beginning, I I won't lie, I kind of got off on it. I was like, oh, well, I'm doing, you know, but then as time went on, I went, mm, okay, but I'm never going to be the main one. I'm never going to be the husband. I'm never going to be the wife. I'm never going to be, you know, the one that you really need. I fulfill a need, but not, but just a physical one. And that's it. So, okay. So Ian says he got his life. <laughs> um and he didn't have much to do, but then he got too involved. And, and you know what? That's very true. I think that happens to a lot of people who uh, play that role is that they get too involved. I know that with me, in my experience, when I did it with, not with every one of them, but I think with certain people, um, I became a little too attached. I became a little too emotionally involved with them. And I realized, I'm like, okay, this isn't working. This isn't you know, what I want, I, like, I realized that I wanted more for myself. 
You know, I was never the kind of person that would call your house. I was never the kind of person. Because let, let me let me bring up another point. Every person who's done that or been in that situation, it's it's all different. I was never the kind of person that would call your home. I was never the kind of person that would come to you, you know, come to your job. I was not that. I didn't do that. I knew what my role was. But then after a while, I was like, you know what? I want more from this. Because it felt nice to be treated well. It well not treated well. But to be, I think to be given attention. I don't want to say treated well because it's not like I went out on a date with the person because it didn't. But to, you know, to be given attention, to be shown affection. And I know that for me, when I did it, I did it out of loneliness because I was lonely, I was bored, and I wanted attention. I wanted someone to to I wanted to be desired. And yeah, it 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 wasn't it didn't end it didn't end bad, but it didn't end well. <laughs> I'll put it to you that way. Um, but that was my experience. And I learned from that that, you know, I want more out of my life. And then uh, and then also I have a lot more traditional. Uh, more traditional values than I thought. So, yes. So what I and let me just classify what I'm saying. Um, you know, a side chick is basically a side dude to someone. You with somebody, they either attached, they're in a relationship, or they're married. They necessarily don't have to be married, but they may be, or they may be in a long term relationship, or you're in a situation ship, and that person basically is, you know, still attached to you. So or still attached to that. You know, to their own special someone. Okay, so Jandari says she that she had, and she didn't like it. Um, she never went into it with the intention of being a side chick, but it happened, and it wasn't for me. She says unless you do it and are able and are able to be emotionally detached, then it works. But it's impossible for me to be detached. See, and that's a very that's a very valid point. She says it's impossible for her to be detached, and that was one thing that even I learned. You know, so what that's now that actually makes me ask another question. How do you how do you go into it with your emotions? How do you keep your emotions at bay? Like if you choose to be a side dude or a side man, like some of you, if some of you are who are watching this now, if you're still in situations like that, how do you keep your emotions at bay? How do you keep, you know, from not getting emotionally attached to somebody, you know, because that is hard. I know that was hard for me. That was very difficult for me because I, I, you know, was like, well, they're seeing me, they're calling me, you know, they give me attention. It's like, well, they must, you know, care for me. But I know that for me, what I did it, I often confused um, sex with love, honestly, which is sad, but it's true. <laughs> I often confused sex with love. I really did. And I thought that if a man was willing to lay down with me, then he must love me. And I think that a lot of people who, whether they go into it intentionally or not, I think subconsciously you go into it with that feeling of, I just, I really just want to be loved and I want to be desired. So hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. For those of you who are just joining us, it is me, the fabulous Leo Brown, and you're watching the Lap of Luxury talk show. This is basically an interactive talk show. It's something that I've always wanted to do where every other week, I'll come and I'll have a question of the day, uh, a special guest, and of course, Intuitive Insights. And that's where I give free readings to the people that are watching. So you can, you know, uh, you can interact with me. And I'm going to do Intuitive Insights later in the show. So keep your questions at bay. Don't worry. I'm, I'm, I haven't forgotten, but I wanted, to, I wanted to go into this question first. So once again, today's question of the day, today's call, you see what question is. Are there perks to being a side chick? And if side chick or side dude, dude, and if so, what are they? And question number two is, have you ever been a side dude or a side chick? What was your experience like? And leave me your story if, you, if you're willing to share in the comments, because I think that's really important. I think you need to have a dialogue about certain things like that. And coming up later on, I'm going to have a one-on-one -on -one interview with special guests, uh, Jimmy Pink. She is a wonderful, talented artist. She hails from Youngstown, Ohio, and she's a, a sweetheart of a woman, just total Renaissance woman. She, she writes, she, um, she can, she can rap. She 
is a great makeup artist, or at least to me she is. Um, she is an animator. She's, she's so many different things. I think the only thing that she can't do is sing. She told me she couldn't sing. So, but anyway, uh, but stay tuned for that as well. So that's coming up. And hello to everybody. And like I said, keep your questions ready. Like have your questions ready because I am going to do, you know, intuitive insights, but that's going to be after the interview with Jimmy Pink. So that's coming up pretty, pretty soon. Okay. All right. So I really want to know for all of you out there, don't be shy and don't be ashamed. You have nothing to be ashamed of. I was a side chick once. Okay. I, I've done it. I, and, I, and I'll even admit this. I, at one point, um, how do I say, coerced a lot of men that I knew were married and went into it. You know, I, I mean, I, I really, really did. Like, I knew many men that were married that actually tried to stay away from me. But I was, at the time, was like, well, hey, I'm lonely, I'm bored, I'm horny. Why don't you come on over here and help a brother out? I wouldn't do that today because I know my worth. But at that particular time in life, I did that. And I realized that in my experience, it was very degrading and it made me feel very less. And it, and, it, and it really made me see that I knew that I wanted more, that that kind of life, you know, that way of life wasn't for me. Now, Mr. Copeland says, you can be in a relationship with somebody, live with them and still be the side chick or side dude. That's a very, okay. Elaborate on that if you can, Mr. Copeland, because that, I mean, I, I can kind of see that, I guess. What he's saying is you can live together and, and have your own separate life, I guess. But I can kind of see that. I know many people that, that go through that, actually. So I really want to hear more of your insights. I really, really do, because I think it's important. So let's see here. All right. Okay. Hmm. And Kimberly Keefe says that was her too. So, so I guess Miss Keefe, you're saying that you were in a relationship with somebody, and you guys were, you were, you were married, but you weren't. How do I put this? You were married, but you weren't in a unit. Is what I'm hearing you say. There wasn't a unity in your marriage. You were. Just, it was just like marriage on paper. Hmm. Okay. Wow. These, see, this is wonderful. This is what I'm talking about. Yes. So you can have separate lives. That's what Teddy Copeland is saying. I think that's true. I know many people uh, that unfortunately, you know, I won't name names, but I know many people that um, go through that, which is sad. And she says, yes, she was a side chick. Okay, Miss Keith, you better testify today and tell us your business, honey. Yes. <laughs> Well, I've been that, I've been the side dude, side chick too. So I understand all of that. I think, you know, in my case, I was young. I was dumb. I was needy. And I will admit in some ways I still am. And not, I don't think I'm dumb, but I can be needy. I will admit that. Um, but, you know, I did what I felt was right at the time. I, you know, I think we all do that. I think we all go into it with one intention, but it ends up becoming something else. So I think that happens to everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes total sense. And I think to admit that you were the side chick or side man, or to even, you know, have the, the uh, realization of how you can be with somebody, be in a relationship, be in a healthy relationship. And it still could be like you guys are the side chick or side dude. That's profound. Okay, she also says, Miss Keith also says, after a while, it gets boring, and you start thinking uh, of yourself and your feelings, and as you say, your worth. That's true, and that's what happened actually with me. It got boring. It, it, it really, really did. It got, well, my thing is this, and, and this is to, to uh, Miss Gutierrez, uh, her point, she says that she's not proud of the experience. Well, my thing is this. I think we all do things that we're not proud of. Everybody has blood on their hands, including myself. But I think you have to look at the lesson. You know, what did you learn about yourself? What did you learn from it? What did you learn about, about the opposite gender? What you Like in my case, what I learned about the same gender was that people are people. That oftentimes it's not really about, it's not you they want, it's the experience. You know, it's the, the, the endorphin. It's the chemical, you know, and also the physical release as well. So I think 
I learned a lot about that. And I learned why, you know, I put myself that low on a totem pole because I wanted to be needed and I wanted to please people and I wanted to be desired. And I'm like, okay, it, would I do that today? No, you know, I mean, and, and, and let me also say this. I've also been, you know, in my experience, I've been with men that treated me better than they did some of their, you know, their main squeezes. So it was very interesting for me because I was like, well, you're married, but, you know, you want to take me out and go places. How can we do that? You're involved. What about your, you know, or especially if they had children. You know, that, that used to always puzzle me. It's like, well, you have, you're married and you have kids. Really? You know, but you want to take me out on a date. That doesn't make sense. But it happens. I, I think we all do it. So, yeah. But I think it, it you know, it's a, it's a lesson. And you just have to look at the lesson and not necessarily, I would say not to beat yourself up over it because we've all done it. Yeah. Yeah. We've all done it. Yeah, exactly. She, um, Jandy says that it's definitely a learning lesson that she would never do again. You know, and I mean, <laughs> I'm probably telling on myself, but and I think that's great that you really are at that point. But I always say never say never for me because I don't know. I don't know what life has for me. I hope to not do that because I know better now. But, you know, I don't know. And, and I'm not saying I would willingly go into it with that. I think if that were to present itself, um, I know that for myself, you know, I would go into it with my eyes wide open and not wide shut. That would be me. Uh, and Kimberly says it's called greed and lust. And that's true because I think you go into it thinking, I know that oftentimes with the, with the married men that I was involved with, I went into it thinking like, oh, well, I can change them. You know, my, you know, my goodies are the best, <laughs> you know, and it'll force them to leave their wife and be with me. And, and there's somebody who has done this. I'm telling you from experience, that is not true. You are just something to do. You are something to do. You are somewhere to go. You know what I mean? You're a good time girl or guy. And I think if, if that's what you choose to do, because it really is all about choices. If that's what you choose to do, then go ahead and do it. But be prepared for the consequences. And that's true with anything that we do. That's true even, even when you, you choose to you know, maintain your health or, or to be uh, spiritually you know, so you got to look at the consequences of everything you do. And it really made me see that. It made me look in the mirror. Um, Miss Keith also says that a little vanity plays into it as well. And it does because it does make you. I'll be honest that when I was with, you know, the men. Um, wow. OK, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to read this comment because this is really good. Um, when I was with the men I was with, a lot of it for me was an ego boost. I was like, oh, I got, you know, and then it, and, and, and I'm kind of, I'm piggybacking on um, this comment I'm just reading. She says, and this is Jandy. She says, I never felt more alone when I had that experience, but I understand what you mean. And I will admit that after the endorphins went away, after the, the, you know, the, the, the coming down of it happened in my experience, I felt like, okay. I'm just a thing. I'm an object. I'm not a person. And once I realized, I said, well, wait a minute. I think I'm worth more, you know? And, um, yeah, I, I slowly but surely picked myself up and was like, okay, I can't do this no more. You know, and that's why I say, you know, if that were to happen to me today, I hope that I would be like, okay, you know, no. Because I, I, I think I would go into it now with more open eyes and ears and more aware emotions than I would, you know, than I would have when I was younger, because when I was young, I didn't care. But I think when you don't care about yourself, regardless of age, you do things that are considered silly and, you know, reckless and um, not worth your time or your energy, you know? So yeah, I, I, I agree because there was a point where for me, it was all about the loneliness. It was all about fulfilling that, that void uh, that would never go away, no matter what I did or who I did it with. 
you know, in my experience. And, I, and, and let me just say this. I think for all of you who are sharing your stories, this is awesome. I appreciate this transparency and this level of openness because I think it's needed. needed. I think that for those of you who are, who are just watching, and you're not commenting, you might be relating to this on some level. You know what I mean? Because it is a touchy subject. It's, it's very heavy. I realize that. It is. You know, but I figure, hey, why not? Let's talk about it. Let's open up. Let's talk about, you know, what's really going on in life. Uh, because it happens every day. It's funny. I was on a group, and they were talking about, um, you know, like how dating has changed. And a lot of people saying that dating hasn't changed. It's just that... We now live in an instant world. Everything is now. We live in a, a, a more instant society. So but anyway, I, we have five minutes left before I get into my main interview. And yes, Ms. Keith, I did see your question, and I'm going to answer it. Don't worry. Um, be patient. <laughs> um, but here's the thing. So before I begin, I want to introduce my next guest. Um, my guest is a... Young hip, well, to me, she's young because she has, she has the energy and spirit of somebody that's like 25. But she is a total renaissance woman. She hails from Youngstown, Ohio. She is a writer. She is a hip-hop artist. She's an animator. She's a social media commentator. She's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite YouTubers. Um, and she is just, for me, just hilarious. I discovered her, I think maybe a year ago i want to say a year ago and i discovered her th you know through the through social media and i just really took a shine to her i thought she was fantastic and she just was real and honest and very creative that's what really struck me the most was her creativity and uh i'm going to give her a call and i'm gonna have her on the show and hopefully if she's watching my feed she will answer her phone <laughs> So I hope she's answering. Her, I hope she's not near her phone. So I'm going to have it. I'm going to try to do it from now on. I'm going to try to do it from this point out. I'm going to try to do my interviews where you can actually see them. Because I have to admit, I do like doing it like this. But I also want to do it where you can, where we can see one another and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to do it where you guys can hear from her via phone. So just one second. And her name is Jamika Dobbs, but but some of you may know her as Jimmy Pink. So I'm gonna give her a call, and hopefully she is by her phone. Yeah, you hear my uh, my uh, junky phone. <laughs> Hello, there we are. How are you, hon? It's fine. It's fine. Oh, I'm fine. I'm about to turn this up and throw me off. Okay. Here we go. Put it on mute. All right. So, welcome, welcome, welcome to the lap of luxury. This is Jimmy Pink, aka Jamika Dobbs. Even though I, I, I like them all, but for those <laughs> that don't know you, I'm gonna ask just a very it's kind of a generic question. It's very Oprah Winfrey esque. So, who is Jimmy Pink? Oh wow! <laughs> wow, damn, that's a question. Jimmy Pink honestly is an exaggerated version of Jimmy Pink. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jimmy is a little more reserved, but um, Jimmy Pink is me to the infinite degree. degree. Mm -hmm. So everything I do, she's just kind of the one where Jamika has all the doubt. Jimmy mm -hmm. Pink don't have no doubt. Like she just goes out there and does. Okay. Okay. Now, now I'm going to piggyback with that question with another one. So with Jamika and with Jimmy, are there differences? Like, yes. are you more like, who am I dealing with today? Am I dealing with Jimmy Pink or am I dealing with Jamika? As of right now, you, you're probably dealing with Jamaica until I get about two more beers in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So you have Jimmy Pink, you have Envy Adams, you have Petty Draper, and I'm trying to think about the other one because you're also a cosplayer. Is that correct? Yes, I am. 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 Yes, I am.
I am, yes. Okay. Now, how did you get into cosplay? Um, honestly, I got into cosplay kind of through drag. Really? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to try not to make this a long story. That's but, fine. Um, we got time. You got 30 minutes. You're good. Go ahead. Okay. But, um, when I was in high school, I was, I was, I was one of those people that you couldn't really pinpoint me. I was popular, and I was the captain of the cheerleading squad. And really? All of this, but I was also a theater kid. So, of wow. course, you know, in Youngstown, which is the hood, and and the early 90s, so I graduated high school in 95, mm-hmm. not a whole lot of the guys were out, mm-hmm. except for the theater kid. Mm-hmm. And then, like, when I got a little bit older and got to college, this is before, like, cosplay was even a big thing, a couple of them turned into drag queen. So I would go and, like, watch them perform, and I'm like, I want to do that. Mm-hmm. And then I would go, before there was such thing as a bio queen, I was doing bio queen in 1996. Um, my name was Alexis Alexander then. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when the cosplay moves that came, like, I always liked making, like, Halloween costumes and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I don't think I can do drag, but I can do this. So I can make costumes for anything. And it's just cosplay and not drag. And then, you know, one of the few good things that RuPaul's Drag Race did for drag is it introduced it while stream where it wasn't that stigma on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, so I can just go back to doing drag then and then, but I don't want to give up the cosplay, so I'll just do both. Mm. That's just really kind of how I thought of cosplay. Wow, that's awesome. So now that, that leads me to another question. What has been your experience? What has your experience been like as a cosplayer of color? Because I have to say, I am not, now I'm going to be the first one to tell you. I am, I'm more of a geek than I am a nerd. I'll be the first one. Like, I, like if, you, if you ask me about like She-Ra and Jim and the Holograms, I can know that backwards and forwards. But in terms of like comic books and things like that, I'm completely naive. I'm like, well, who's that? What's that? Why is that important? Um, but I wanted to know what has your experience been like as a cosplayer of color? Has it? Have you seen it grow over time, or is it pretty much the same where you don't really see that many uh, cosplayers of color like you should? Um, I would see you like this. It's more visibility mm-hmm. of cosplayers of color. Mm-hmm. Um, the cosplay community, because with anything, the more mainstream it gets, the more open it gets because you have people that are like the holders of the guard because they used to like really be initially with cosplay. Mm-hmm. Like, you better look like that character. And I mean, for real, like, so if you're a black cosplayer, you better be playing a black costume character. And if you, if you did, you better be playing She-Hulk or somebody because you can't play Storm mm-hmm. and do a size 14. Like, there's, there's people that's that serious like that. Wow. Because there, yeah. So because there's not very many, and that's, you know, representation of other than white, cisgender, straight wants, mm-hmm. is now becoming, a, it's, it's better now, but now we're getting more characters of color, and we're getting a little bit more of, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a costume. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, don't pick on this person because they want, because they want to dress up is Wonder Woman and they black. Right. Anyway, you know what I mean? No way. I dress up, and you know, we have different things now because you have to get more creative with it. Then you have things like crossplay. Because I play, I do a lot of male characters and just make them female. Mm-hmm. Like, one of my favorite cosplays I have is, excuse me, is Scorpion. And that's because I like the female characters, but I ain't that body positive yet. And I'm like, well, I can't wear enough that skin piece. So <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. what I do? And I'm like, you know what? My favorite male character is Scorpion, so I'm just going to do that. Right. Uh, but there are more cosplayers of color. I mean, and it's a, it's almost a sex to itself. Mm-hmm. Like where, you know, there's a um, big website and a big, like they have a big Twitter following called Geeks of Color. Mm-hmm. And like they celebrate like all things. There's black cosplayers or all these, you know, different things like that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's not, it's still, it's more common, but it's still not. It's not where it could be, is what I'm hearing you say. No. Okay. And of course, there's also that stigma, especially like if you're from the hood, uh, 
you don't do that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not trying to equate it with like being gay, but it's like, like Monique Carter said, you can't be gay and black. Like, well, you can't be a geek and be black either. Hmm. You, you cosplay, that's weird as hell. Like, my, my family thinks that is weird that I do that. Wow. And I'm okay. like, you got TV shows, I, but you know what? But you know something though, I can kind of see that because you know I have to admit that when I first heard about cosplaying, and I heard about it from my my brothers back home in St. Louis, shout out to them. And um, I remember when I heard about it, I was like, well, that's just odd. And then one day, I sat down and I watched. It was a cosplay show on Sci-Fi, and I watched it, and I was like, wait, this ain't no but a drag ball, just without the Vogue and. You know, and, it, it, it ain't nothing but a drag ball. And I trophies. See, I see more straight men dressed as female characters, and they're not even like cosplaying. The convention I just came from, there was a woman dressed as Wonder Woman with a man, which I'm assuming was her boyfriend, and a Superman tutu, corset, cape, red fishnet, red high heel heels, red high heel shoes, and she was leading them around on a Superman leash. Wow. I see, well. I, I, see, I see more straight guys. Basically in drag, mm-hmm. in anything. Mm-hmm. Wow. They love that. They love that. Well, let's see. I have, so, okay. So I'm going to kind of switch gears now because we talked about that. Now, I'm going to give you the question of the day, which is, are there perks to being, because we were talking about side chicks and side dudes. I, I, I was listening. I said, oh, she just kept me up to tell you. So <laughs> I just had to ask you, since you are my interview and you are my guest, have you ever been a side chick? One and two. If you have been, what have been the perks of you being a side chick? Yes, and it ain't no fucking perk. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. And, and, and this is true, too. And um, I'm sorry because, like, the way your comments are showing on my screen, I can't read them. But there was one young lady that commented because I've been watching since it came on. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't want to. I just didn't want to comment because I knew like the interview was coming. But. It is a slippery slope, and you never mean to do it intentionally. You think you're going into it, just like, you know what I'm saying? I'm mm-hmm. basically getting my rocks off a couple times, and, you know, what, 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 what they do is they business. Um, and, and I'm not going to elaborate on it because I, the person that I was doing that with, the person that they are with, mm-hmm. follows my every fucking move, like be on my YouTube channel and everything. Oh, wow. So um, I'm not going to get too, too into it. Um, but what I will say is this, like, regardless of the situation, like I said, I'm not going to get specific about my situation because I do feel my... You, have to, you don't got to go too deep, but you don't right. have to feel too much tea. But, I, but, I but just give us deep. enough. Give us a crumpet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I did initially go into it like I ain't been laid in a year by choice. Mm-hmm. I, I knew this person previously for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. So I was just like... Well, hey, I already, he didn't already hit it before. I'm just going to go ahead and get that a couple of times. Not knowing that that was going to turn into what it is, and for real, for me, mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's great, but you know, I could uh, go get Bob from the porn shop for thirty dollars. It's gonna do the same. You're right, though. No, you're absolutely right. Correct. So, yeah. You know, and it, it, I mean, it, to be honest, that's actually one of the reasons why I stopped doing that and stopped doing a lot of casual encounters for that reason. Because I was like, well, wait a minute. What am I getting from this aside from, you know, a dry wallet and a wet bed? And to me, those things don't, they don't equal, they don't compute. So I stopped doing it for that reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a slippery slope. Just, just, just don't even fucking do it. Well, what advice would you give to a woman or a man who it looked like they were going to go into that kind of thing? What would you say to them? Honestly, all I can say is you got to do you because for some people that works. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, for some people that works. Mm-hmm. And it worked for me for a long time. You know, I have a full-time job. I have basically my YouTube channel is a full-time. And then with other things that I do do, like I do cosplay and go to conventions and stuff like that, it was convenient because it was like, well, I'm not looking for no serious relationship, no way. Mm-hmm. So for some people it does work. You just got to know yourself mm-hmm. and... I don't know how to tell you to put the brakes on your feelings because mm-hmm. everybody can't. Mm-hmm. I was able to, I was able to for a very, very, very long time, and then one day the brakes went bad, Charlie Murphy. The brakes went bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So you know, all I can say is go into it like you were saying earlier. Go into it with both eyes 
wide open, mm -hmm. know what it is, and if you know that you're somebody that's susceptible to feeling, then that's probably not something that you even want to try. Right, correct. Yeah, I agree. So now I have to ask you this, and I'm also going to play a little game with you too. So I have to ask you, because I've, I've listened to your music. And by the way, if you guys have a chance, go to CD Baby, go to iTunes, and download some of her stuff. Her music is really, really, really good. Thank you. Yes, it's really good. So go to it and download some of her stuff. Um, now I have to ask you, how did you get into the music industry? How did you get into hip-hop? How did I get into hip-hop? Well, first of all, I have a sister that's eight years older than me. I'm 40. Mm -hmm. So she was like first generation hip hop, and you know how it is when you have older siblings. I don't got no control over what I listen to. Right. She, she takes control over everything, and you know she's basically first generation. So that's what she listened to. That's what I grew up listening to. But I also was excuse me, myself first generation MTV. I remember being three years old when MTV premiered. Like I, that is my, one of my earliest memories. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Um, excuse me. I come from a musical family. They all sing. I can't. I just sing well enough. Like, I was in a show choir. I said, I was in a show choir. I was in theater. I could sing good enough. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, I knew I wasn't going to Broadway. I knew I wasn't going on Star Search and singing or, or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I was always really good at writing. I was always really good at writing. And then, this is the honest to God truth, how I really started rapping. I was always into hip-hop, but I really didn't rap. Mm -hmm. When I was in high school, my senior year, I had a boyfriend. And, and well, he was controlling even me, but I did not realize that he was. It started out as adorable, over you know, protective. It eventually turned into abusive. Mm. Um, but you know, those were times that I didn't recognize at the time. And I had really just started like drinking and smoking and stuff like that. Well, you know, senior. He was. He. I skipped the grade. So we're mm -hmm. the same. Me and that guy was the same age, but he was a junior. I was a senior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I graduated, you know. Seniors, we hitting up everybody's party. It's, it's a kick it. And, and the time was a little bit different, too. Not so many DUIs. Gas was cheap. Beer mm. was cheap. It's right. Right, right. We got to remember, we got to remember in the 90s, things were cheaper. Things a little something cheaper. called inflation. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Things were different. You might get pulled over, drink and be like, I graduated this year. And the cops be like, all right, just take your ass home. Right. Like, it was a lot different. And because he was so overprotective, well... If you're going to go to all this senior stuff, I had two male friends that in high school everybody thought was nerds, but they rap. And, like, all their friends rap, like, people that they knew, but, like, they was all considered to be nerds. And those were the only guys that he would let me stick it with. Mm -hmm. Because he knew they wouldn't try nothing. They knew they probably was kind of scared of him. And, you know, they would be freestyling and stuff, and I would be, like, there. And every once in a while, I would, like, just try, because I'm like, well, I'm just going to keep sitting here while y'all do this over and over and over again. Yeah, fuck that. And eventually, from being around him, it went from, okay, we're going to let you not do this no more today, to, wait a minute, you said something kind of hot, to me actually being able to hang with them. And then I realized I had a talent for it. So what I wanted to do, I actually wanted to be an A&R. Really? Yes. And for those of you who don't know, A&R means artist and repertoire. Artist and repertoire, you Kick and like, like develop the artist. That's yes. what I want to do. That's, that's where you teach people how to give interviews. You teach people how to step in and out of cars. Think of like the Motown or the MGM machine back in the day where they taught you how to be an actual artist, how to be an actual entertainer. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what I actually wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But I live in you know, Ohio. So I figured that because I had the talent to do it, how I, was, how I was the easiest way for me to meet the people to do it, to prove that I could do it, was to basically become an A and R to myself, mm -hmm. which is which is where Jimmy Think started at. Ah, okay, that makes so, sense. If I can tell you, well, I created my own image and my music, and I pick all my own beats, and I write all my own lyrics, and I pick all my own clothes, and I did all this for myself. Why can't I do it for somebody else? Hmm. And that's how I started rapping. I was like, well, I know I can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and then when I started doing it, I realized, like, holy shit, I kind of actually love making music. And that's, that, and that's how I started. Wow. Okay. That, okay. 
Wow. See, I love how you how it all kind of it sounds like to me it all just kind of came together. Like through a bad situation, you found one of your many gifts. That's awesome. Yeah, I would never think, you know what, as much as and I was in a relationship with like high school sweetheart, mm-hmm. like I was with that man from seven, sixteen to about twenty four. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it took it a while to actually get to physical abuse, but it, you know, now once you know the signs, and a lot of times you don't know until afterward, that's why like people are trying to make it more aware now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was always leading up to that. I just didn't see it. Right. Or maybe, or maybe, you, maybe you didn't want to see it. And and, and, I'm, and I'm quite a bit of it was I didn't want to see it. Mm-hmm. Quite a bit of it was I didn't want to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, but with that being said, you know, his I would never take that relationship back because it taught me what the hell I was never gonna put up with again. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's that's wonderful. That's very empowering. Actually, I'm glad you you shared that and shared. Some of your well, story. I, well, I share it now. It took me a lot of years to be comfortable even talking about it. Well, it sounds like it because it sounds like it was quite a uh, quite a journey. Just, I mean, being on. And I'm pretty sure many men and women who are listening and watching can relate to that. So that's awesome that you were able to even share that. I applaud you for sharing your story with us. Well, thank you. I try to. You're welcome. I try to help the next one. Like this is hey. Red flag, red flag. Right. Red flag. That's well. Oh, now that kind of leads me into my uh, next question. As we have a few a few more minutes before we have to wrap this up, and my okay. next question is: with your YouTube channel, I noticed that you talk about everything from drag race to the Me Too movement to racism in the gay community. What compels you to say, you know what? Okay, I know I could could talk about Steven's universe. But I have to talk about this. What makes you go? I got to switch it to it being something lighthearted to something serious. What moves you to do that? You think? I, to be perfectly honest with you, it's just if it hit my spirit, like you know what, enough is enough, and I do have a little bit of an audience. And even with my music, I did that. Like, yeah, we, we, it, it could be fun, and I want to talk about this TV show and this and this and this. But if this strikes my spirit to speak on something, I'm going to speak on it. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. just point, like, period. Mm-hmm. There are just some things that I'm like, okay, y'all, like, for real, like, hold on, because I don't know if y'all caught this. And a lot of times it might even come out of something that I get triggered from one of the shows I review. Like, Pose triggers a lot of serious topics when I review Pose. Mm-hmm. A lot of times I end up having to go off to a tangent, like, no, let me break it down for you like this. And it, it, and it really just is. It's just, if it, if it touches my spirit, like, you know what, you do have the ear of a few people. You mm-hmm. might not be CNN, you might not be uh, Logan Paul, but, you know, you do get Right, you do have an audience. Right, and, you, and, and I think more importantly, what I like about it is that it shows that no matter how big or small your platform may be, that you have the, the opportunity to use your voice to help someone. Yes, you can make them laugh, but you can also help them at the same time and make them think. Right, because you never know, and I'm a firm believer, everything happens for a reason. Because that happens to me when I'm watching other YouTubers. So I know it happens to other people. You might not even know you needed to hear that that day. Or you might have been going through something. I don't know you were going through that. And I might touch on exactly what you needed to hear that day. Mm-hmm. That's true. You know, you might you, you might, have, you might have needed to hear that from somebody today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with that being said, I just was like, you know what? If it touched my spirit and I want to speak on it, I'm going to speak on it. And sometimes, like, don't get me wrong. YouTube is my side job. I do make money off of YouTube. Make no mistake off of that. Mm-hmm. But I'm never going to tell out what I do to make more money on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I don't care if y'all want to, you know, detag this video because I'm talking about pro-choice. I don't care if you want to detag this video because I'm talking about gay rights. I don't care if you want to detag this video because I'm talking about football players kneeling on the field. I don't care. It takes money, man. I do work. You know what I mean? Right. It ain't going to mm-hmm. make me break me. If I don't feel like I need to talk about it, because there are a lot of YouTubers that won't. Oh, they're going to take my monetization. Fuck your monetization. Yeah. This is more important than your monetization. I'm making sense. I'm just making a fraction of sense off of each ad to come off this video. I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I do. Yeah, I do, and I love the fact that you do that because even, even with my channel, though I don't do it a lot, but even on my channel, I'm like, you know, I don't always want to talk about, you know, what the stars say for Leo or what the stars say for... A certain celebrity. Sometimes I want to. I just want to talk. 
Sometimes I just want to vent. Sometimes I just want like, look, we got to talk about things that are happening in the world. That's important, you know. You have a voice. You might as well use it as best you can. So I agree with that. Now, for the last 10 minutes of, of this interview, I have to ask you, well, I have to ask you two things. Uh, the first question I want to ask you is when it comes to Jimmy Pink, Jamika Dobbs, Envy Adams, Petty Draper, and I know there's another one in there too. You have so many personalities. If you could have them all separate and they were all on a deserted island, who would you take with you and who would you leave behind? Envy got to go. Envy got to go. Envy can't come. <laughs> Why? <laughs> envy can't come. Because envy, envy is the monetization of my depression. Oh. Okay. So, envy is like, you know, kind of doom and gloom and she literally is like the man by when I don't feel like I'm myself, I feel like all the color is gone from my world. That's why she only wears black and white. Ah, okay. So, like, She's Debbie Downer. You, we, she can't come. Leave her behind. Mm -hmm. um, who I would take? Ooh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take Teddy Drake either. But she, Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would. I would have to take Jimmy. But me and Jimmy always gonna get along. Like, because I'm, you know, like I said, she's just an exaggerated to me, and I'm quite sure she would get on my nerves. Mm -hmm. I would probably get along with her the best out of everybody. Okay. Actually, I take that back. Jamaica would get on her nerves. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, I got to play this with you. So, I know that you were, you know, as, I, as we just talked about, you were in the hip-hop community. You performed. You did a lot of different, you know, um, musical events with, with rappers and things of that nature. So, we're going to play a little bit of Mary Fuck Kill. Okay? Ooh, okay. So, your choices are Machine Gun Kelly, 50 Cent, Eminem, and oh, what is his name? Um, oh my good logic. So who would you marry? Who would you fuck and who would you kill? I'm gonna be honest, I know Machine Gun Kelly. Like, we came up around the same time. I've done shows with Machine Gun Kelly. So I would have to marry Machine Gun Kelly because I know what type of dude he is. So I, I, I would have to marry him. Plus, you know, ain't nothing like somebody to kind of know your upbringing. And, you know, I used to get made fun of being too white. Well, this is a white boy from East Cleveland. I don't know if y'all know anything about East Cleveland, but that is the hood, hood, hood. So, hmm. you know, I, we, you know, I think we would get each other. Um... I would have to fuck 50 cent. I mean, why would you not? <laughs> if you can drive Vivica Fox crazy, nigga, you might, you, I, I, he's probably working with something, you know. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm a side queen, baby. He oh, so, okay. That's something we didn't know. So yeah. for the record, everyone, Jimmy Pink is a size queen. She's not just a bio queen. She's a size queen. A size queen. Yeah. All right. Now what, now I got, now I got, that kind of leads me to another question. So what's the best size? <laughs> What's the best size? Uh, the best size is about somewhere between seven and a half and eight and a half inches for me. Cause, oh, oh, wow. Because okay. nine, is, nine is long. That's spoken that's shit you ain't supposed to be spoken. Don't do that. <laughs> um, and I would say mm, between seven and a half and eight and a half inches for me. Oh, wow. She's okay. She's saying length and girth. Okay, come on. And girth size. Go ahead. That's the, the, the biggest I can put my mouth around without cracking, cracking in the crack. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's the best way I can describe it. All right. This, this is going to be a really good episode. Now, for those of you who missed this, you can go back and hear everything she just said um after the show after the show has concluded so and i'm definitely going to share this on my social media platforms especially youtube i can't wait for my youtubers to watch this uh, but listen, listen y'all i don't be randomly flubbing now <laughs> <laughs> i ain't out here sucking everybody dick i ain't out here being i should have been black china <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Okay. Now getting back to the Mary Fuck Kill game. You said that you would you would have sex with 50 Cent and you would marry Machine Gun Kelly. Now who would you kill? Because you had Eminem and you had Logic. Kill him, man. I can't kill him. Um, I like Logic, but I'm gonna tell you something about Logic, and and, and I'm just gonna be honest, mm-hmm. dude. The biracial struggle is not that goddamn real. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what. This is this is true. I ain't gonna go too too far of the story, but my maternal grandmother was a uh, half mixed race mm-hmm. person. Mm-hmm. Her birth, she was born in 1904. Mm-hmm. She was mixed like that. And her hair was poker straight. She had very, very pale skin. And so she was kind of like logic. You can't be black, but she was too black for the white people. Right. In 1904. So to me, your biracial struggle ain't shit. Because I've heard the stories of what my grandmother had to go through. Mm-hmm. I get what you're shit. saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I do. 1904, they wasn't getting down like that at all back then. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. You, you know, you got way out of town. That's how my grandmother ended up in Youngstown. Like, come on, man. No. 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 The vibration struggle is not that real. You talented. You dope. But that would, that would get on my nerves, like, a hell of a lot. Now, I have a question about that. Do you think that he's used it as a marketing ploy? I feel like that is something that he struggles with internally. Okay. I don't feel like, I feel like he's projected. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. Because I still get, I have one of my videos that I have is top 10 white rappers. I still daily get somebody to say, what about Logic? Logic is only half white. So if we're going to put Logic on there, then we might as well go ahead and put J. Cole on there. Because they have, they have the same makeup. Mm-hmm. That's true. You know true. what I mean? They have the same makeup. It's just that J. Cole pulled more black jeans. Mm-hmm. Logic pulled more white ones. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, so I understand that people still think that you're white. For real, Logic you wouldn't have you wouldn't have the um what I'm looking for the success that you have now if you didn't look that white. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You getting way more radio play. And I understand a little suicide song, and that was too. And it was and, and, and it and it was a great idea to do that. But had that been the Migos to drop that song, you think that song would have been that big and they'd have been performing on the Grammys and all that shit? No. Mm, okay. She wow. You make a very valid point. Now. Before I let you go, because we only have three minutes left, um, I don't. Well, I think you know this, but I told you prior to the interview that I'm also a psychic. So, would you like me to give you a, a little mini reading? <laughs> well, I guess she's ready. So, I guess it's a yes, right? Yes. All right. Okay. Well, I'll just tell you off the bat what I pick up around you is I pick up around you a great deal of writing. Um, I don't know if you journal or if you should. Well, I'll say this. If you don't journal, you really should start journaling because you really are a good writer. I definitely see you either doing poetry or like a spoken word, even even a spoken word album, believe it or not, because I'm seeing music being made. And I feel like you're going to go into, I see you going into like the, I see you going back. Like it's almost like you're going to go back into like the old school way of not rapping, but I think in terms of, of the way the art is projected, the way the art is delivered. And I also see you doing like a neo soul, not you singing, but you rapping and then think of like, because I'm hearing it in my head. Think of like, how do I love thee? Like Queen Latifah, like that. Okay. That's what I'm seeing. And I want to say like for another th- three to six months, that's the timeline I'm getting. I, and I see you in the studio. Um, I'm also seeing, are you, I don't want to say you're worried about your health, but I feel like your health has become a bit of a concern, especially when it comes to sleep. Maybe it's because, um, cause you work a lot at night cause I'm seeing a lot to do with you in the nighttime. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm also getting around you that your moods lately have been just, it's like the stock market. One minute they're up, one minute they crash. And I feel like you cry. Like there's a there's a side of you that nobody knows. And it's not dark, it's just cloudy. That's the best way I would describe it. It's cloudy. It's sorrowful. I feel I pick up a lot of tears. And I don't know whom this is around you that has um 
that is in spirit that I feel like you haven't mourned. I definitely get a male energy around you regarding this and you haven't grieved them completely. Does that make sense? Yeah, actually. Okay. I don't know who this is. For me, it feels almost like a like an uncle or a brother or somebody like just very close. And when they passed, it was just like that. And it's like, okay, one minute you're, I'm talking to you and the next minute you're gone. And I keep hearing like, how could this be? And I pick up a great deal of anger and a great deal of like, not like angry at them, but more of like, okay, how, how could you leave like that? Because I didn't know. I would have been able to say goodbye. I would have been able to wrap things up because I feel like there were some things that maybe you both didn't say to each other before they passed away. And that's been eating at you. Which is one of the reasons why you work the way you do, which is one of the reasons why I think YouTube is such an outlet for you. Um, and I'm also getting like a lot to do with either your eyes or your eye. Um, you wearing glasses. I feel like they're going to get thicker. Um, and I see you really getting a handle on not just what you eat, but why you eat the way you do. Because eating for you is an outlet, eating and drinking. And I'm seeing you getting to a place where you're like, I have to figure out what this is. Um, maybe not this year, but I would say probably within the next year, I see you actually going to a therapist and talking to somebody. Because I get a sense that even though you're very animated and you're very you know, up, there's a side of you that's very, that feels very much by yourself. Like there, are there moments where you feel very much alone? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it makes perfect. Okay. Yeah, so I would suggest that you do that. You go to someone and and try to you know talk things through if you can, if you choose to, because that is a choice. Um, and I'm also getting a lot to do with you in spirituality, where you're really trying to be more aware. You're not a religious nut. I feel like you've gone through some experiences with with the religious community and you're like, nope, I'm good. But I see you becoming more prayerful and it's almost like you're on your own journey. And I'm also going to say this, that when it comes to, when it comes to maybe like your, your mid to late teens and twenties, there's a lot of guilt. Like you did a lot of crazy stuff, but also there's a lot of guilt there. Let that guilt go. That'll help you a lot. And I don't know if this woman is your mother or aunt. I don't know who this is. But whomever this is that's in your life, I feel like you guys need to patch your relationship up. There's some issues there that have been there for a while. And I kind of get this big divide. And the thing of it is, you're actually more alike than different. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm getting. I hope I made sense. Did I make? I hope I made sense. Yeah, 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 I do. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, I do. Make a lot of sense. Good. And I'm going to say this too. Even on your YouTube channel, be a little bit more. Don't be afraid to be so introspective, because believe it or not, people really do value those things. They they love it when you are serious. They think it's good, and it's good for you too because it's a good way for you to be, to be, to show different aspects of yourself. That you're not always up and happy and bubbly and pink. I most certainly am not always bubbly and pink. That is for sure. Yeah. So just saying. But with that being said, I thank you so much, Ms. Dobbs, for allowing me to get to know you a bit more, to interview you, and for you coming on my show. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You are awesome. Now, how can people get in contact with you? Um, I am at Jimmy Pink, basically everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, everything is Jimmy Pink. Mm -hmm. J-I-M-M-I-P-Y-N-K. Um, if you see a little Sailor Moon, little black Sailor Moon character in a pink outfit, you hit the right place. Okay. And how can they download your, your awesome music? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but it's on iTunes. I did I did not know this because I don't have Spotify. One of my viewers did tell me I'm on Spotify, so you can plug me into Spotify. Um <coughs> if you want to check it out first. Okay. It is it is a lot of my music is on my channel, but it's kinda of buried. 
But if you put in um, Jimmy Pink, a lot of times it will come up. You know, when you listen to artists and it'll say so and so dash topic. Mm-hmm. There is a Jimmy Pink topic. It has my full album, um, Jimmy Pink's American Psycho. It's the last album I've ever I ever did, and it's ten years old. Hmm. So, now, okay, I got to ask you this before I let you go. Are you working on anything else musically? I have not made the steps to do it, but I want to. Um, I haven't made the steps to get in contact. Um, I'm, I'm old school. Like, don't get me wrong. I like dealing with other producers, but for the most part, I have a couple of producers that like really understand my style mm-hmm. and, and will craft me specifically for me based on what I like. Um, so I have to get in contact with those people mm-hmm. um, and see what's going on with that. Not that, I, not that if anybody out there makes beats, I will shop beats via internet. My email is even jimmypink at gmail.com. Like everything is, the beauty of doing the rap thing before I was actually doing the YouTube thing mm-hmm. is that I had already had all this stuff reserved under my rap name. Okay. Which is Jimmy Pink. All right. So, Therefore, like, there's no discrepancy. Everything, everything I'm on is at Jimmy Pink. All right. Well, you heard it here first. If you want to get in contact with Jimmy Pink, you just add her at Jimmy Pink, and you can email her at, at jimmypink at gmail.com. If you are a producer and you want to work with an up-and-coming artist, and I tell you, she's really, really good. Don't take my word for it. Listen to it yourself. She is awesome. Email her at jimmypink at gmail.com. So thank you so much, Miss Pink. Thank you so much. I'm gonna call you Miss Dobbs because I like you. I like Jamika. I like I love Jimmy Pink, but I love Jamika even more. So Oh, thank you. Yes. So take care of yourself, love yourself. And honey, if you need me, call me. Oh, I, I sure will. All right. Thank you, All darling. Right. Well, thank you for All right. All right. Thank you so much. That was an awesome interview. So now it is time for Intuitive Insights. That's where you can actually ask me questions because I know you guys have been waiting to do that. So thank you so much for joining me and um, putting up with that. That was fun, though. I enjoyed that. She's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So creative. And there was so much more I wanted to ask her. But of course, time is of the essence. So if you have any questions, concerns, whether it be about your love, your money, you know, you a side chick and you don't want to be no side chick no more, put them in the comments. I will read them and try to get to them all. Okay? So let's do this. So go ahead with your first question <laughs> if you like. Because I know that somebody had a question earlier. I might have to go into it to find it. And hello, everybody who are just joining me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So go ahead with your first question if you have it. You can leave it, write it in the comment. And if you want to get a reading with me outside of Facebook, I'm going to actually pin it on here so you can go to my actual website. Um, Hold on for just a second. Yes, y'all, I'm typing and talking at the same time. Bear with me. And there we go. All right. And you can go to my website at psychicleo.com. And uh, you can go there and you can get um, readings, you can get life coaching done, um, anything that you need, that you feel you need to do, you can do. And let's see. So my first question comes from Miss Kimberly Keith. And she says she has a new love and she wants to know when will he come to see her? <sighs> I swear everybody wants love, 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 love and happiness. Okay. Um <laughs> So when will he come to see you? Um, he lives in, she lives in Florida. Wait, no, he lives in Florida and she lives in Chicago. Um, I get the fall. I get September, the number nine, is when I see that he may come and see you. Yeah, late August, early September. That's when I get that he may come around and come to see you. So, Miss Keith, you, if you're watching and you're listening, that's what I get for you and your new friend. And believe it or not, I do like it. I like the communication. Communication is really, really good. Um, but, I'm, but I'm also being told to don't jump the gun on it. Just go with it. Just let it flow. Don't push yourself. Don't push him. And you guys will be fine. All right. Anyone else? So. 
Yes. And for those of you who are just joining me, my name is Leo Brown. I am a psychic medium, a life coach, and a motivational speaker. And you, you, you know, you probably wonder like, well, what is he doing? Why is he wearing an earring? I'm wearing an earring because I like it. Uh, I'm wearing the makeup because I like it. Um, and let's see, you know, this is what I do for a living. My goal is to empower people. My goal is to help people as best I can. I often say that I am not 100% accurate. I am 100% human. And that's all. Um, and I try to give the best answers that I can and the best guidance I can. So that's what I do. That's who I am. And um, yeah, all that good stuff. So go ahead with your questions. If you have them, leave them in the comments. And I'll be sure to answer them as best I can. Because I want to, you know, I want to make sure I get everybody before time, you know, runs out. I don't want to, hold on for just a second, I got to fix my collar. I don't want to um, skip anybody. So, all right. And you can, and if you want to get a reading, you can go to my website, that's psychicleo.com. And you can go and get a reading from me. And I'll be more than welcome to hook you up. And also, if you're in the Houston, Texas area, um, I do my readings in person, too. So, and I'm also available for events um, all over the country and international. Okay, let's see. <laughs> do, do, do. All right. But, um, yeah, I enjoyed that interview. It was a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. And it was nice, nice to get to um, to know. It was actually nice to get to know her on a deeper level. I thought it was cool. I hope you guys enjoyed my interview with Jimmy Pink. I can't wait for my next uh, guest, which won't be this upcoming Thursday, but the following Thursday. So, you know, I'm trying to decide. I don't know who I want to have on it yet, but we'll see. Okay, so another person wants to know. She wants to know, she says, hey, Leo, will, will she relocate once they get involved? Her and her new friend, will, they, will she relocate? Um, not right away. No. I don't get you relocating right away. Nope. I don't. Um, I, I actually get it being very, um, the word I get is slow, believe it or not. I don't see it being, you know, right off the top. Uh-uh. Um, and I, I think that's more so him than you. I don't think it's going to be because you won't want to relocate. It'll be more so because of him. And I get a lot of it maybe because of finances. That may be why. That they are like, you know, can we wait to, you know, to do this on their end? So I would say just, that's why I say to you, just give this time. Don't allow this to manifest on its own and you'll be fine. All right. Let's see. <laughs> okay. So, my goodness. So, I hope everyone is having a great, great Thursday. I am so far. Okay. Wow. All right. Now, here we go. Here are the questions. Okay. So, I'm trying to get to you all one at a time. Okay. Um. All right, so Jendari wants to know, what does the next six months look like for her? Well, what I hear around you is music. Music, 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 music. music. I don't know if you're going to go on tour. I don't know. I, well, I get performing, like performances. I get you traveling. I get New Jersey, Connecticut. Like, I get you traveling upward. Um, I get you being extremely busy. And I kind of get like, it may be a balancing act for you. You're trying to balance out, you know, work and career, like career and, you know, what you do as a hobby. Um, and I'm getting that you may end up, I get Canada around you. Like there may be something going on in Canada as well with you for, um, in terms of, you know, your musical career. Uh, Cause I keep hearing music around you and I feel like that's going to, that's going to open up a lot. Let's see. Then in terms of love, I get that being slow. I get that being slow and steady wins the race. I get a lot of hard conversations taking place, but I think they're going to be worth it. Um, and I feel like the person that you're with wants the same things as you, but they don't know how to execute. Their execution is all wrong. Um, 
I would say by the by November, December, not only do I see you being happy, but I get you being like like deeply involved with somebody by that time. If not, you'll be entering into that arena. So it's it's coming. Trust me, sister, it's coming. All right. So okay. So Miss Davis wants to know. She says her sister didn't like the truth. She told her about herself, and now the sister has blocked her calls. I'm sorry to hear that. First of all, she says, should she reach out to her or let her marinate a while longer? She's been a headache to her for many years, and she'll reach out herself when she needs something from me. Okay. You know what I get around this? And, and I get that honestly and truly, um, your sister has some really deep emotional issues. She really, really does. Um, and it's not you. I feel like, I don't know if it was the way you guys were brought up. Because I get a lot to do with like the, like parents. I don't know what happened with her. But something happened with her and the way she was reared. Even though I know you grew up in the same house. But I feel like she, she, she um, internalized things differently. And what I get around her is a lot of, she's someone that is very manipulative and she's someone that is very much, she gets used a lot, but she also uses people. And to answer your question, reach out to her, but, okay, reach out to her, but keep her at arm's length. That's the best thing to do. Because she, and, and, and really and truly, you won't really have to reach out to her. She'll reach out to you first. But what I'm getting is that once you guys start to like talk again, keep her at arm's length because she's got some deep emotional work to do. She's got some deep rooted stuff. It's not, it's not, she's just projecting a lot of her stuff onto you. That's all. So just let her, let her be. That's the best thing you can do. Okay. Yeah, and I'm sorry that you and your sister are going through that. It's it's hard when you know you have issues with siblings, and you know they, uh, you know, even though family is family, but still. But I, but the one thing I I'm even learning is that you know even even sometimes with family you have to learn to say no, and that's not always easy. And I hope that made sense, Miss Davis. I hope it made sense to you. Um, if it didn't, please let me know in the comments because I am human. But you know that's what I'm getting around this. And I feel like it wasn't not only what she said, it was how she said it. Um, and also, there were things that you needed to tell her that for you, granted, it came out all very confrontational, but it was needed, you know, and it was healthy. So I know maybe you may not feel like you did the right thing, but you did. So just saying. All right. And thank you. Thank you, Jandere. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Thank you, Miss Keith. I'm glad that you enjoyed that. For those of you who are just watching and you're kind of unsure, you're not really sure about if you want to get a reading from me, I understand it. It's okay because uh, it's not for everybody. But if you would like to, you can go to my website, which is psychicleo.com. That's psychicleo.com. You can also follow me on Twitter, which is The Real Leo Brown. You can follow me on Instagram. That's The Real Leo Brown as well. You can follow me on Tumblr. Um, that is the official Leo Brown 36. And let me see, I'm trying to think. And I'm also on YouTube as Leo Brown as well. So if you don't want to, you know, you don't want to get a reading, but you want to follow me through, you know, other forms of social media, you're more than welcome to do, to do that. And also uh, be sure to like my Facebook page, which is The Real Psychic Leo Brown. That's The Real Psychic Leo Brown on Facebook. So like me and support me, support a brother for the business. All right. So any other questions before we wrap up? Okay. Um, okay. There. Okay. 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 Ms. Davis, that makes sense. Cause I was seeing a lot to do with your mother and what I get around that regarding, you know, um, that what I get with that is that she has not, it's not you that she's mad at. She's more mad at herself. And I also feel like she's mad at her mother because I feel like her mother was not, her mother was a mother, but her mother was not nurturing. And there's a difference. When your mother doesn't nurture you, you tend to, to lash out at people. You really, really do. So that's what I'm getting. I, I get that. 
there's some deep rooted things regarding that. And she really needs to get some counseling. She needs to get some grief counseling. It will help her a great, 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 great deal. So, but I'm, I'm glad that made sense. Good. And like I said, you said what you felt at the time. You, you said what you felt was right at the time. Um, and it wasn't what you said. It was just how you said it. But you said it. And the thing of it is, you can't take back the things you said. So, all right. Any other last questions before we conclude? Because I want to make sure I get everybody. And I thank you all for joining me tonight. First of all, thank you so, so much. I really have enjoyed this. This is awesome. You guys have been awesome. If you can, do me a favor. Be a friend and share this with your friends. Um, share it on your Facebook pages if you want. You don't have to. Um, be sure to like. Be sure to comment. Um, give me a lot of love, you know, because I know it's something new. It's not, you know, the, the normal where I just come on and give readings. But I want to do something different because, you know, I want to expand and show different sides of self. And I think that's important. Um, but, you know, I've enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun. I have to thank my guest, Miss Jimmy Dobbs, a.k.a. Jimmy Pink, for coming on and allowing me to interview her. She was very funny. It was very, a lot of fun. Um, tune in, let's see, in the next couple of weeks because I do plan on having more people. And if you would like to be a guest on my show, email me at psychicleo28 at yahoo.com. That's psychicleo28 and put in the lap of luxury uh, as a subject and we'll get together and talk about it. Okay, so we have one last question before I go. What does the next couple of months Mr. Copeland wants to know look like for me? Um, I pick up the first thing I pick up around you is job change, job changes. Um, I feel like financially you're going to change, like you're going to change direction when it comes to your career. Um, I kind of get with, and I don't know why this, if this makes any sense, but I get with your love life. I see it kind of changing directions, not like a split, but it's like you guys are going to like not be separate, but the imagery I'm seeing is like you guys kind of doing your own thing and then coming back together and then doing your own thing and then coming back together. If that makes any sense. Um, I think that's because you both are changing, you're growing um, in different, in different ways, but you both are going to learn to see each other's points of view more uh, is what I get around you, around your relationship. Um, And I'm also seeing you wanting to lose weight or wanting to, Take better care of yourself health wise. I'm saying that as well. Um, and I feel like you guys are, you know, definitely, you're definitely changing, you're definitely growing. And it's not that you guys won't understand each other, but it's more of, it's like, I never knew you felt that way, or I never knew, you know, this was what you was really, you know, you were really going through, uh, that kind of thing. That's what I'm picking up around that. So I don't necessarily see a separation in terms of like your relationship, you know, ending, but I see you guys going like, oh God, you know, I, you, you've known me for how many years and you didn't know that about me? Just new discoveries, new things. Uh, but financially, especially, I feel like things are definitely going to change, but they're going to change for the better. And I'm seeing you wanting to travel more. I'm seeing you saving more money. I get you wanting either to be a homeowner or you're thinking about it because I get something to do with you buying a house. So that's coming up too. And I want to say, probably by December, somewhere in there. Yeah. Mm. So I, I, I don't know why, though. that's what I get for you. So I feel like your next couple of months are going to be very transitional. They're not going to be bad. They're just, tra- you're just changing. They're just transformational. So that's what I pick up. Yes, Christopher, know who I am. That's right. So I just feel like it's, it's going to be interesting. And I feel like it's going to be a lot of growth communica- communication-wise and even emotionally for both of you. It's not going to be a bad thing, but it'll be worth it in the end. So, and with that being said, I'm going to wrap up for tonight. Uh, I thank all of you for coming in and for joining me. I have to thank my guest once again, Jamika Dobbs, aka Jimmy Pink, for being here. Um, it's been wonderful. And um, it's been good. Join me, not this upcoming week, but the following week, because I am going to come back. I don't know who my next guest is going to be, but I definitely plan on having somebody that I think will be um, worth uh, you guys getting to know. I've enjoyed this very much. And uh, until next time, B.
be, be yourself and remember that you are loved, you are fierce, and most of all, you are fabulous. And for those that I miss, don't, you know, I'm sorry, blame my head and not my heart. So it's nothing personal. But until next time, I will see you all once again. I am the Fabulous Leo Brown, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.